So hello everyone, uh, my name is Mark, and um, I'm currently in the fulfillment team. But I was in the global search team a while back, and I implemented some of the stuff. So I thought I should give a presentation before my memory fades away. Um, today's topic is about Elasticsearch. For those of you who don't know how Elasticsearch is, it basically offers a global Vortex search. Uh, you can do a global search on the top right corner the, for the, on the search field. Uh, there is no demo for today because all the change I'm discussing are backend changes and they wouldn't affect our users. So uh, most of the slide will be about Ruby codes, except the very, very end. So it's uh, more focused, more for the Rails developers. Uh, the today's session will be split in two parts. The first part, I will be discussing how the Elasticsearch Rails gem works. Then I will discuss how GitLab uses it and why we use it differently. Uh, since the word Elasticsearch is quite long and sometimes doesn't fit the screen, so I would abbreviate it uh, from time to time. So part one, uh, Elasticsearch Rails is a Ruby gem maintained by the Elasticsearch company. It contains three parts. The first part is called Elasticsearch Persistence. It basically allows you to use the Elasticsearch server to store all the model data, like MySQL or PostgreSQL. We don't use this gen. The second part is Elasticsearch Rails. It provides uh, many utility functions and we use it for instrumentations. The most important part is the Elasticsearch model gen. It basically connects our Rails model to the server. And this is the only part I will be discussing today. So uh, Elasticsearch model's core is to provide a proxy to bridge Rails model and the server. All the search related logic resides inside the proxy and all the search commands will go through a proxy to the server. There are currently, uh, there are two types of proxies. One is class method proxy and the other one is instance method proxy. As you can tell from the name, one is sitting at the class level and the other one is sitting at the instance level. So if I, I can access the class method proxy from the issue class, and I can access the instance method proxy from one issue object. Uh, the class level proxies are mainly for reads. For example, when I do a search, it will go through the class method proxy. And the instance method proxy will be for writes. Say if I create a new document, then I want to update the data to the server. The most basic setup is to just include the two modules, uh, the Elasticsearch model and the Elasticsearch model callbacks. By doing so, we gain all of the search functionalities. For example, we'll get two Elasticsearch methods to underscore Elasticsearch methods. Uh, what this method gives us is it will return the proxy we mentioned earlier. So for, for example, a book instance, if we call underscore Elasticsearch, we get an instance method proxy. Its target will be the book itself. And if we call underscore Elasticsearch on the book, we will get a class method proxy. 
So the proxy object is like where all the search related logic resides in. Uh, basically we can call all the commands on the search, on the proxy object. Here I will use uh, indexing as an example to show how the gem works. So if we create the issue and we save the issue, what would happen? Since we included the callback module earlier, uh, the model module will add three callbacks to our model. One for create, one for update, and one for destroy. Uh, since we are in creating an object today, so this, uh, the first line will be triggered. It will call Elasticsearch proxies index index document method. The index document method will first prepare the data for indexing. So if you look at the point one, we will see it calls us index JSON method. By default, a index JSON a index JSON method would serialize all the attributes as a hash. And then this, uh, this hash will be passed to the server by the client as we see on uh, point three. By this, by this point, um, the, com the operation is done, so the data is indexed. But sometimes we don't really want to index everything. Uh, we might not want to make every attribute searchable. We can define our own uh, index JSON method to override the default method. So we can define a index a index JSON on issue model. And here I just want to index a title because I only want the title to be searchable. The method name underscore Elasticsearch is very long, so it's quite tedious to type that all the time. So the Elastic gen, Elasticsearch Rails gen provides some convenience forwarding. It will forward a few methods to the proxy directly. So we don't have for example, when we do import, we don't have to type underscore Elasticsearch. Uh, proxies are consist of many modules. This means we can cherry pick only the things we need. The design philosophy is very modular, which is a good thing because we, it gives us a lot of flexibilities to customize it. And um, each of the proxy has access to a client. The client is the object we use to communicate with the server. It's basically a Faraday client. Faraday client. And it knows the information such as the server URL and the port. By default, all of the proxy share the same client, but this can be changed as well. So as a summary, the most simple setup would give us two methods, one on the class level and one on the instance level. And that will give us the two different proxies to work with. And uh, in GitLab, we use Elasticsearch Rails a little differently. This is because, um, first I will talk about our problem. So up until I think last year, Elasticsearch indexing can take a very long time, up to many days. And every time we do a schema change, we require re-indexing. However, during re-indexing, the search results will be incomplete. So that's a annoyance. So our goal is to have zero downtime search when our data schema changes. 
the development path was decided to allow multiple versions of search code to coexist at the same time. And we determine which version to call at the wrong time. So we'll have multiple copies of the logic. They can be slightly different. And we choose dynamically which version to use. So I will explain the implementation in three different parts. First, I will talk about the proxy part. Here, we use snippets as example. Previously, we used to have snippets include snippet search module, which contains all the search-related logic. However, the module does not allow dynamic swapping. So let's less flexible if we want to have multiple versions. On the other hand, using the classes and objects is a very suit, um, it's a suitable way to do dynamic version changes. Um, so the proxy design is flexible that we can use separate classes. Instead of using the same class in all kinds of search, we can subclass the proxies I introduced earlier. For example, we can have one snippet class proxy and one snippet instance proxy. And we can also have different versions of the snippet proxy too. So here we can have uh, version 12.1 snippet class proxy and version 13.0 snippet class proxy. We can also keep things dry by extracting common logic. Here, the common search logic is extracted as application class proxy. And you can see the inheritance hierarchy from snippet to application class proxy, then to class method proxy. So how do we choose which version to use? We use a switchboard. So if we recall earlier, the simplest setup, the underscore Elasticsearch method would lead us to the proxies. Now we can have the underscore Elasticsearch method lead us to a switchboard, which in turn would link to different versions of the proxies. At the time of uh, when I was writing the code, I didn't have a good name in my head. So I named the switchboard classes as multi-version class proxy and multi-version instance proxy. Uh, they are not great names. <laughs> How do we choose uh, which version to route to? The answer would be, this is a based case by case. For example, if we have two indices, version one and version two, assuming version one is in sync and version two is still indexing. If you want to do search, we obviously want to do that on version one because that's the synced version. But if you want to write to indexes, we would want to have the data write written to both version one and version two. And if we want to remove the whole index altogether, uh, we obviously want to manually select which one we want to remove the index. So I've uh, put this into this table and uh, how do we represent uh, version one here? As indicated on the red cell. So we, if for reads, we want to return only one version, which is the synced version. So I have declared a method called elastic reading target, 
which returns the single in sync version. For elastic writing targets, uh, it will return all the applicable versions. Here it will be version 12.1 and version 12.2. And how do we represent uh, the index, all the methods which are write methods? I have declared a method called methods for all write targets. <clears throat> Basically, this is an array of methods which will require us to forward to all the versions. So if we index, a if we create a document, if we remove a document, if we update a document, we want the changes to be propagated to both version one and version two. And this method will contain the list of methods for doing this. And for methods such as removing indexes, we also have a list here called methods for one write target. So for import, create index or delete index, those methods are, um, those methods shouldn't be forwarded to all the versions. You should be deciding which version those commands are runs on. So they are in the separate method. So to recap, uh, earlier, the table I gave can be represented as those different methods I have declared um, for read operations. It would be delegated to the elastic reading target method. For write targets, which should be delegated to all the versions. I will look into the methods for all right targets to get a list of methods, and then those will be forwarded to all the versions as indicated in elastic, elastic writing targets. And lastly, methods for one right target. And those are methods which shouldn't be forwarded to versions automatically. So how is the table represented in code? Um, I have the table can be is represented by the generate forwarding method. It is responsible for set up method forwarding at boot time. Um, for each of the method in methods for all right targets we will call forward to all right targets. Uh, this is the point one I uh, put on the top right corner. So for all right targets, uh, sorry, for methods which should go to all the versions, we would forward calls to all versions by calling the forward to all right targets. And um, if we look inside the forward to all right targets method, uh, you will see that we define a method for each of the methods we pass in. First, we will look through all the writing targets and we will just pass the data by calling public send method to the proxy. Lastly, we collect all the responses and we return our successful ones if it exists. But if everything, if all the version returns successful results, then we return the last one because they are all successful. Uh, this is for writing to multiple write version, write targets. Now we move on to forwarding to one single read version. 
for read operations, we only want to forward to the one version which is in sync. But how do we determine which methods should be forwarded to uh, the read target? We will first take all the methods and um, filter out, take out those which are for write, for write operations as indicated in point two. We also take out those methods which are the instance method of the current class. And lastly, we don't want to forward method missing. Now we have uh, read methods for all the things we want to forward to the single in sync version and we call forward read method, which is a simple delegation call. I'd like to take a detour here and talk about real class. So Elasticsearch tries to be smart and overrides the class method on instance proxy. So when I call class on snippet instance proxy, it would give me snippet class proxy. But this can result in a really cryptic errors. And sometimes I really need to get a real class. So to do that, I declare my own class called real class. I declare my own method called real class. And you can see real class in use here because I need to get a real class in order to get all the public instance methods. So that's why real class exists. So how are the targets specified? Uh, I have a method called version. When I, if I pass in a version string, you will give me the class of that version. First, I would get the namespace of the version. And then I will get the proxy name by concatenating the string. For example, if the data is snippet, the proxy class name would return snippet instance proxy. And then I will use this string to look up the namespace to get the proxy class. Uh, let's all for the switchboard. And now we are in the final part where we want to connect Rails model to the switchboard. Each of the searchable model would include application version search. It provides elastic search methods which returns the switchboard class. And it also does some permission checks and some other stuff. By including the application version search module, once again, we get two Elasticsearch methods. But this time, it will return the switchboard objects one for the instance level and one for the class level. So this is the overview graph where all each of the classes I have talked about. On the top left corner, we see our Rails model. And in the middle are the two switchboard objects. And on the right are different versions of the proxies. And for reads, you would go to the single in sync version. But for writes, you will write to all of the available proxies. Now we have two different versions of the search code and they can have their own client. 
and their client can point to different indices on the Elasticsearch server. So they can act independently. And theoretically, we can even point the client to two different clouds. They would enable us to migrate from one cloud to another. Currently, we only have uh, one version and we hard code that version to Elasticsearch reading target and Elastic write targets. This is because halfway through we switch our focus to, to enable the global search on GitLab.com. But I still think uh, there are some benefits. For example, we get we move all the search related co code into their own classes. So our model is cleaner and smaller. And now the testing can be done on the proxy objects. So what would be the next step? Maybe we can rename the switchboard class to actually be named a switchboard. Or maybe we don't need the switchboard because currently we only have one single version. Also, when I was writing this presentation, I find out that when we call generate forwarding, it's done many times. I think this can be uh, refactored to be only called once during the boot time. So that's all of my presentation, and I want to give special thanks to Marcus, Marcel, Dennis, Kava, Dava, and Kai. We worked together <laughs> when I was implementing this logic. And thanks, James Lopez, my manager, for allocating me time for writing this deep dive session. So it's Q&A. Um, do anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Uh, cool. And thank you for attending this and uh, wish you have a nice day. See you. Thanks.